So I know on Friday some of my teammates talked about different or some other parts of the magnetosphere, but I'm going to be talking about the magneto tail today. So first I just want to go over the general structure of the magneto tail. So um, it's comprised of a uh, north lobe, which is like the large region here, the south lobe. Uh, the plasma sheet is this region in between the lobes up until this neutral point. Um, after this, it becomes a neutral sheet, and um, that's just kind of the general region and the parts that I will be talking about. So I'm just going to preface my talk with just a general overview of ions in magnetic field lines. So magnetic magnetospheres um, are most of the regions are filled with a certain amount of plasma. Um, and plasma is just generally um, ions and electrons. Um, and these ions tend to travel along magnetic field lines. Um, so if the magnetic field lines are closed, such as in here, then the ions are unable to escape because they just get trapped in that loop. Whereas if the field lines are open, like here in the lobes, they are able to escape because they will travel along field lines away from the magnetosphere. So, uh, just to first talk about the north and south lobes, they're about uh, 40 to 50 radius of Earth wide, and they extend for 3,000 plus radiuses of Earth long. They go really far, which is um, in comparison to um, the sunward side of the magnetosphere, which gets compressed by the um, oncoming solar wind. Um, and they're comprised of relatively parallel magnetic field lines. So, um, you know, it's, uh, the magnetic field lines will be coming essentially straight in to Earth in the north lobe and straight away from Earth in the south lobe, which will become important later when we're talking about the plasma sheet. Um, and due to these open field lines, like I mentioned before when I was talking about ions, um, the ions are able to escape um, along these field lines away from Earth and they eventually get connected <coughs> into the solar wind so the plasma density in this region is going to be very low because it's not able to retain these ions. They just uh, get swept away as soon as they enter these regions. Um, now the plasma sheet is the region that separates the two lobes. Um, and it's characterized by weak magnetic fields, whereas the lobes have uh, high magnetic fields. Um, and because of its closed nature, um, it has high plasma density as the ions are generally not able to escape. And unlike the lobes, which have you know, somewhat fluid boundaries, um, it has very rigid boundaries that, uh, as you can see, converge here at the neutral point in dictated shape. And we're going to talk about why that is the case later. Um, actually, right now. <laughs> so um, the process that causes this rigid shape is magnetic reconnection. So um, if you think about the uh, north lobe having you know, a strong magnetic field going towards the Earth, and the south lobe having strong magnetic fields away from the Earth, where they come together, you have two opposing magnetic fields that are strong, and at this um, point, this uh, you know where they meet, a strong current called the neutral sheet is created. Um, and if you, we assume that there's infinite conductivity, which there isn't, but let's just for a second assume that there is, and Peer's law would say that the closer the magnetic field lines get to this neutral sheet current, uh, the larger the current flow of the neutral sheet pushing back on these magnetic fields would be, thus the magnetic fields would never touch. However, this is not the case. As you get closer to Earth, the, um, the magnetic or electrical resistance increases, and thus magnetic energy is you know, lost or expended um, due to this resistance. And thus the magnetic fields will tend toward this region of loss, as you can see in this diagram here eventually converging at the X point in this diagram or the neutral point in the top diagram. Um, and this is the reason for the plasma sheet's well-defined shape. It's um, bounded by these converging field lines and bounded by this neutral point here. Oh, and it's worth noting that the neutral sheet, <coughs> that current that separates the two, uh, you know, the upper and lower magnetic fields, uh, continues past the neutral point but the uh, electrical resistance is uh, low enough that the current is you know, strong enough to keep the magnetic field apart. They only converge at that one point. Um, and now I'm just gonna talk about the diffuse aura, which is um, a phenomenon that occurs um, partly due to the low magnetic field inside the uh, neutral sheet. So the um, activity of the plasma sheet 
of the plasma inside the neutral sheet is very turbulent. Due to the low magnetic fields present there, you know, the other magnetic fields and currents that surround the Earth have more agency over the ions um, in the plasma. And this turbulence, you know, among other reasons, causes uh, very high temperatures uh, in that plasma sheet, unlike the lobes, which tend to not have this. Um, and the weak magnetic fields also allow plasma ions to occasionally leave their field lines, since, you know, the field lines aren't very particularly strong. And they leave the field lines um, generally here and here, you know, kind of in a ring around here, which can be seen through this satellite picture here, where that image is capturing the ions that are, have left the plasma sheet and uh, create this diffuse aurora around the Earth. It's not visible to the naked eye, because we can't really see ions, but, uh, you know, satellites are able to capture it. Uh, but that begs the question, if ions are leaving the plasma sheet, um, you know, unless they are getting, you know, replacement ions, from a source, then it would be all the way empty, and it's not empty, so therefore ions must be coming back to the plasma um, sheet through some means, and we know that it can't be from the lobes, since they have such a low plasma concentration, so it must be from somewhere else. And that is uh, where I'll talk about plasma convection. So, um, where are the replacement ions coming from? So James Dungy theorizes that they come from the actually the sunward side of the magnetosphere, here at this neutral point M. So in a similar way to where I talked about with the north lobe and the south lobe having um, opposite magnetic fields that you know come together at one point, the same happens with the Earth's magnetic field and the solar wind the magnetic field um, here at the neutral point. They, they're going in opposite directions and at point N, they cancel each other out and create this neutral point of no magnetic field. And Dungy theorizes that at this point, the um, ions that are in the solar wind are able to leave their field lines and kind of get reattached instead to the Earth's field lines, where at which point they can travel along the Earth's magnetic field lines, you know, perhaps like around here, and then eventually reach this neutral point that I spoke about earlier, and at that point, they could then re-enter the plasma sheet in a similar way to the ions left the plasma sheet to create the diffuse aurora. Um, and that's about it. That's, uh, you know, what I learned about the um, magneto tail and magnetosphere in general. So, are there any questions? Questions? Okay, thanks, Scott.